Hello, this is Professor Grant Gall. One of my students, Tyler Welt, asked that I give him advice on analyzing hurricane track data. Hurricanes do give us the opportunity to evaluate vector data, hurricane track data. Vector data is not frequently used in business geography, real estate market analysis, but it could be used. With vector data, we have an origin, a destination, and we have attribute information in between. Highways can be vector data, for example. The information that Mr. Well provided me was vector data on hurricane path and look at its attribute data. We have the year, 1851, on up. We have the name of the hurricane, the latitude and longitude of the line segment, and the category of it, uh, the pressure, and the wind and knot. On up to 1994, we have Hurricane Nona in 1994. Location was, which in that case is Eastern Pacific. So what we have is a global band of hurricanes. Now we're only interested in hurricanes in north central Florida, so we'll reduce this set quite readily. First of all, I must see where Florida is on the map. Zoom in on Florida. It's my working layer, and I'm going to select by radius and click on the center of Alachua County and move a distance outward, and here I'm out to 181 miles. Now I have selected my set tools, export, and I'm going to add it to this file, and I'm going to export it, this Esri shape file, as a caliper standard geographic file. I will call this uh, layer Hurricane Track North Florida. Now I can now remove the previous hurricane track, and I'm left only with the hurricane track in the target area. Now zoom into that area, and this is, I'm interested in the area on land. That's where I have additional data on, and particularly Alachua County. Now how to analyze the vector data? There's a lot of different ways to do it, and I like to convert information as we've done before when we had points. I like to convert the information to polygons. Remember, these are estimated locations of the center of the hurricane track. So let's make a grid. Tools, geographic utilities, create vector grid. We'll call this a hurricane grid, version one. I'm going to cover the window square, uh, approximately. Uh, so we have four points in it, and I'm going to cover the map window with cells of fixed size. My fixed size will be six miles on a side. That corresponds roughly to the size township range. And hurricane grid. And so here's my, I can pass information from the vectors to the grid. So I'm going to make the grid layer my working layer and then go into tools and I'm going to perform uh, an overlay. So we have uh, Tools, Geographic Analysis, Overlay. And I'm going to overlay the grid over the layer Hurricane Track, North Florida. And Caliper requires that we have a, a distance band around each one. Since I'm dealing with a six-mile grid, miles 0.25. I want to count the number of hurricanes that have passed through each grid cell. Now I look at the attributes in the vector file. I'm going to start out by clearing it all. Wind knots, I will average. Wind pressure, I will average. And if you are a hurricane specialist, then you might choose to do some other mathematical manipulations. Hurricane grid, version 2. Here's our attribute data, wind and knots and pressure. Now, I like to save my layer after I have created an overlay. So, tools, export uh, my uh, hurricane grid to a standard geographic file, add the layer to my map. I am not going to make it into centroid points. I'm going to keep it as a grid data layer. We'll call this hurricane grid version, hurricane grid version 3. I can remove my previous hurricane grids. I don't need my hurricane track anymore. Making the uh, new grid layer, the working layer, see what a theme would look like. Field, wind and knots, number of classes, five. And we'll have equal size intervals. And we'll pick a light color that shows up well in this video. And then a dark color. And let's reorder the draw. 
and I'm going to make the boundary, now we made a thematic map, a hairline, 